What is Access? Access is a database. What is a database? A database is a software program where you can store and organize all of your data in two. For example, let's say that I want to keep track of all the employees in my company. I want to be able to store their information like first name, last name, their date of birth, so I can send them a big fat birthday card on their birthday, also their phone number, maybe their hourly rate or salary. All of that information I can create and store. And for each employee that I have, there's going to be a record. So for example, me, Kurt Kershaw, I'll have my first name, my last name in this database. Also, I could have my home address, the hourly rate that I make. All of that is going to create one record of information, one record for each employee. Other things I can keep track of are like products. My company sells products, and I want to keep track of it from the employees. Now in Microsoft Access, to keep track of them separately, it has what are called tables. So this is a table of information all about employees. And this is a table of information all about products. So in the products, we could have, let's say, the product ID, the product name, how much I have in inventory or on stock. Again, all about products. I also have orders. So every time a client makes an order, I want to keep track of the order. Maybe I have an order ID here, also the date that the order was made. So in case if we have things like a warranty issue and the client says, hey, I want a replacement or a refund, we can look inside the table and keep track of when the order was made and see if it's 90 days out. If so, it's no longer under warranty. Again, keeping track of those things within the orders table. And then finally, we have clients themselves. We can have the company's name or the first name, last name of the client, their address, shipping address, credit card information, things like that. Now, Microsoft Access is what is called a relational database. A relational database means that these tables can relate to each other. Let me put it to you this way. When you have a filing cabinet, you have information on your employees, your products, and also your clients, those who purchase the products. Do you dump them all into one filing cabinet or all into one folder? And then later on, let's say you want to pull up just an employee. That's really inefficient because first of all, you have to lift this 20 pound folder out. And then secondly, you have to sort through the products, your orders, just to get and to find the employees. I mean, what a waste of time. So in a relational database, for example, you can create again, what are called separate tables or separate folders. And what that means is that, for example, if I want to pull up the clients, that's easy to pull out right here. But if I want to pull up the clients and I want to keep track of all the products one client has purchased, like client XYZ, then what I want to do is I want to create, again, Microsoft being a relational database, a relationship between the products and the clients. So I can come over here to products and say, look, I want to extract some of this data. I want to find out the products for, let's say, we sell essential oils. For all the essential oils that we sell, I want to find out all the clients who purchased that, and maybe I want to do some target marketing to those clients. So there's no way I can pull up the products just by themselves and guess, well, who purchased the essential oils, and well, pull up the clients by themselves and say, I wonder which client did it. But if I go ahead and create a relationship, again, Access being a relational database, then for every product that's purchased, it's going to be tied to a client here. Not only that, but for every product that's purchased, it's through an order like the order ID, we have a date of the purchase, things like that. So we'll have the clients relate to the orders for every time they want to purchase a product because the orders are going to keep track of that, the date that they made the purchase. Again, breaking it down, I'm not going to pull up all this information. If I just want to find out how many orders a client has made, I'm just going to pull up these two tables, clients and orders, and it will be accurate because they'll be relating to each other. So for every order a client has made, it will show me the date that they made the order. And if I just want to keep track of how many orders they made, then I just need these two tables, orders and clients. I don't have to pull up the employees. That makes no sense. So it really becomes more efficient when you break it down into the smallest, most meaningful parts, or in this case, tables. All of my orders are in one. All of the products are in one. All the clients are in one, and so on. So you're really just organizing your data and breaking them down, and you're going to relate them or creating relationships. So if you do need to pull up related items, like the clients to the products, you can do so in a GIF. Now, Access is more than just tables of information. In fact, what makes Access so powerful once you create your tables or your data in these tables is the ability to manipulate the data that you pull in, what you want, when you want. So for example, I got, let's say, 200 employees. I don't want to go through each employee's record and find out if the employee has benefits or doesn't have benefits. I want to be able to instantly create a query and pull up all the employees who don't. Just filter out those who have it and filter in those who don't. Let's say out of the 200, it automatically pulls up 25. I mean, that's fast, that's efficient. And that's what they call a query in Access. And then based on that query, I could create a report, print that off and hand it over to HR and have them go ahead and contact those employees to be able to offer them benefits. 
Also, you can control the information that is being entered into your database, and in this case, into your tables, like the employees. So, for example, if I hired on a new employee and I want to be able to have the first thing they entered in is the employee ID and then the employee's first name, last name, just think of it this way. Have you ever done shopping over the internet and you gone to a web page and you put in the first name, last name, and they had those fields up at the top of the page here? Well, in Access, you can control where those fields are placed and what fields come first. You can have the fields up at the top of your form, the middle, or over to the right hand side. Again, instead of the first name being first, I would have the employee ID being first, and maybe the employee ID is a unique identification number. Maybe it's their social security number. But again, I can control the user's input of what needs to come first when it comes to entering in the records. In fact, let me go to the next slide in my PowerPoint presentation and break this down. Now, Access has what are called objects, and as we just learned in the previous slide, the foundation of all the objects are tables. Because, let's face it, without a table of data, you don't have a database. So you got to have some data, and to store the data, we create a table, and we break the data down into the smallest, most meaningful parts, in this case, tables. For example, we had a table all based upon employees. We want to keep track of all the employees. Keep that in a separate table, and keep track of all the clients in another table, like their first name, last name, address, and so on. Now, before we go any further, I strongly recommend that you actually watch our Microsoft Excel 2013 training videos. That is, if you're not familiar with Excel, because Access has a lot of similarities to Excel, except that Excel is more simplistic and is a great introduction to the Access tables. For example, I'm going to go ahead and click on the link right here to open up my Excel 2013 workbook and give you an introduction into tables, because Access tables and this Excel here, what they call a spreadsheet, are the same in that they have cells. And these cells make up a spreadsheet, or in Access, they would make up a table. And you can see over on the left-hand side here, I have a database on my Dreamforce's payroll, and I'm keeping track of all the employees, the first name, last name, social security number. You see, I've got all this information here, and so that makes up a database. And you can say, look, if I can create a database in Excel, why don't I use Excel? Well, you may want to use Excel to store your information, to keep track of it, because in Excel, you can actually do some sorting, like you can sort by last name. You can actually filter in those who have benefits or those who don't, like the blanks here are the ones who don't have benefits, but on a very simplistic level, because Excel really wasn't meant to be the end-all of end-all databases. It's something to get started on. Also, Excel will perform functions and calculations, like for example, I have the hours for Max Klinger here, there's 40, and then I have how much he gets paid per hour, $75 an hour. And what I did is I multiplied these two cells together, to get the gross for that week. And those are the things that you're going to be learning and doing in Access. So in other words, if you can come in here and learn about Excel and feel comfortable with moving around in these cells and typing in information into the cells and performing calculations and being able to sort information, then you've got the grasp or the basics how to work with the tables in Microsoft Access. In fact, think of the Access database built for small to mid-sized businesses. Well, what about large businesses? Like let's say you're a huge business for theblaze.com and you've got thousands of employees and millions of clients, you want something a little bit more powerful, something like maybe Oracle. But when it comes to the hierarchical structure within Microsoft, Excel is a way to start learning about databases and how to perform calculations, and then Access, I would say, would be the next step up. For example, in Excel here, you can't print reports or design a report. What you see here is what you get. It's face value. So if that works better for you, go ahead and stay with Excel. But if you want to continue with Access, again, I strongly recommend that you watch my Excel 2013 Level 1 training videos and get the basics on Excel until you feel comfortable with it. So having said that, let me go ahead and close out of Excel. I'm not going to save it. And go back to our presentation and finish our objects off here. So once we have our data, our raw organized data, the tables, then we can go ahead and query out the information from those tables. We can say, look, we want to see all the employees who don't have any benefits. That's what's called a query. It instantly filters out those employees who do have benefits and only pulls in those who don't, without having to scroll through again hundreds of thousands of records. On top of the query, Access has what are called forms and reports. Again, a form is something you can create as a place where you can organize the fields and control how the user inputs the data into the table, because again, a table is where you store all the data. So this form is just basically a place where you can actually type in information. Once you type it in, it dumps it right into the table. And the forms, you can make them look really nice. Think of it this way, like a report. A report is information you're taking from the table, but in an organized way. 
just as a form is a way of entering in information, a report is a way of pulling out information in a nice organized manner. And then finally, I want to be able to define those objects a little bit more in detail. So a form, by definition, will display information from the table or query because, again, a query is based upon a table. Or you can enter in new information, new data, new records. It's a way of being able to control what the user inputs that's going to store in the table. And a table, again, is raw organized data. A report is the printable results of forms or queries. You can actually turn a form into a report and print that off. And again, forms are based upon either queries or tables. And queries are always based upon tables. So as long as you have that link that is based upon the tables, you're going to be able to create a report. And what are queries? It's just another way to retrieve data from the table to be able to filter in and filter out specific information you want to see or don't want to see. And finally, again, emphasizing the table, without data, without information, without records, without names, addresses stored, you don't have a database. So as long as you have records, everything is all right because you can query those records, you can create a report based upon those records, and also have a form to input information to store in the table to continue on creating additional records. I'm going to go ahead and end the PowerPoint presentation here and close out. And the operating system I'm using here for the training video is Windows 7. If you have a Windows 8, that's okay. What I've done is I created a shortcut to the program Access 2013 on my desktop. And I also added it down below on the taskbar. And if you want to do that, you can always click on the Start button and then go to All Programs and then scroll to to find your Microsoft Office 2013 folder, open it up or if it's Windows 8, your tiles, and then you can go ahead and right click on the shortcut within that menu there and say that you want to go ahead and send it to, and we can do the desktop to create the shortcut. Or you can go ahead and say you want to pin it. Well, it's already pinned to the taskbar, so the only thing I can do is unpin it. You can see it's down here already pinned. When you pin it to the taskbar, you can go ahead and click on it, and it opens up the Access Program in a single click. If it's on your desktop, double click to open up the Access 2013 program.